Okay, um, yeah, we can go ahead and get started here. I was waiting to see if anybody was going to show up. We did have one show up here finally. Maybe some more will join us in a bit here. So, um, as usual, feel free to, you know, jump on the microphone if you have a question or put it out in the chat uh, for anybody that joins live here. Um, so, I'm just going to jump right in. I um, kind of went through the preliminaries already. So, I've already got the uh, repository set up for assignment eight. I'm, I'm assuming most people have um, um, already gotten past the, mostly gotten past the, the steps in order to be able to get your repository cloned and um, uh, get started on the assignments. So, um, all right, so yeah, this for this session, um, we're looking at assignment eight, which is about cues. Uh, I did want to make a reminder. So for anybody that watches this after the fact, um, I mean, you know, we've only got two more assignments. Uh, this is the end of our fourth week here, um, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. But um, our last week, I had this in in uh, in our my latest announcement um, for our class here. So our last uh, week. Um, week five is not really a week. Um, so uh, we're officially done on Thursday, July 8th. So we don't have Friday. So unlike for the previous week where we had the full week and you could do the, the midterm test, well, the, the mid class test um, um, on Friday, everything has to be done by Thursday of next week. So you should really keep that in mind. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, there's not as much to do this week as there is uh, next week. So I really encourage people to get started, get, get assignment eight finished up and actually get started on assignment nine and 10 uh, this weekend if you can. Um, so be ready because I mean, any work that's not in by Thursday midnight, um, I'm not going to be able to look at. I'm pretty much going to have everything finished except for the assignment 10 um, and uh, the test two will be graded and everything that gets turned in before midnight uh, will be graded before midnight as well. Cause I have to turn in stuff like the next morning. So um, anyway, just keep that in mind and make certain that um, if, if at all possible, you get an early start on um, our last uh, two units here. All right, so let's look at the um, assignment eight. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, so like, like I said, I already skipped the preliminary. So I've already got the repository clone and that should be uh, building and running. Um, running the tests. Um, there are some tests to find. Um, so let me go back to the description. Um, there's a couple of things on here that you can read about. So um, we're going to start by implementing a few methods in the uh, Q class, um, but we're going to be jumping back to the array-based implementation um, of our data structure for this unit. So the AQ class. Um, so um, these, func these functions that you have to, to write, the NQ, the DQ in the front, are going to be pretty similar to the um, um, the list functions that you had to write. So our a list um, functions that um, um, I don't remember if you wrote those or, or if you just had implementations of those. So, but um, anyway, so 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 um, um, we're going to start by writing these these three functions first of all. Um, So one thing to keep in mind, so, so we're, we're implementing a queue this week. Um, so as I discuss here, um, there's, there's a problem if, if we implement a queue using an array or we've got this, this kind of this puzzle about how to make it efficient. Um, so if we use an array that we, like we've been using it so far for the stack and the list, um, an array-based implementation for our queue. There's this fundamental issue, and I, I describe it here, and, and I think I talked about it in our 
lecture videos for this week um, as well. Um, so for example, uh, so for a queue, we need to be able to uh, put items onto the back of the queue, right? And then take items off the front of the queue. So we call that in queuing and dequeuing, right? So in, things get in queued to the back of the queue and they get dequeued, which is how you take them off uh, from the front of the queue. Well, actually you use front to see what the item is. It's currently at the front of the queue. And when you're ready to remove it, you dequeue it, right? So the issue is, um, let's say, so we're using an array. Let's say that we're going to use, you know, index zero um, to be the front of the queue, um, and then the 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 last index uh, to be our back of the queue. Again. So for the last index, um, uh, if we want to enqueue an item, um, we could do that in constant time, because remember the 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 back item, um, as long as our array isn't full, that means we still have some room uh, to, to, to put new items onto the queue, right? So if, if we're using like whatever the, the back index is um, to put new items on, we could do that in constant time. We just put it onto the, where the current back index is pointing, and then increment back index is one. And as long as our array isn't full, um, we'd be fine. But um, if you wanted to dequeue um, and you were using front index at index zero, um, you would have a problem because um, um, I mean, you take the item off, but you would have to shift all the items down if, if you're doing things the same way we've been doing them before when we did our list or our stack, right? So, so to dequeue the item at index zero, you'd re remove it, but you'd have to shift all the items down by one index. So that would make your DQ operation uh, an ON operation because of that shift, right? Now, and, and it doesn't help to uh, reverse it. So, I mean, you could say that um, I'm gonna uh, use the back index or my last index as the front of the queue. So in that, in that case, so you, you fix it for the DQ. So, so if, if my back index is actually the front of my queue now, or our last index, or whatever we want to call it, uh, to remove an item, you would just um, uh, decrement your, your last index or your back index by one, right? And so they, you wouldn't have a problem with the DQ in terms of efficiency, but you would have the same problem for the in queue. So if I needed to add an item, um, I would have to shift all the items up by one um, to make room at index zero so I could insert my item at index zero. All right. So the common way to solve that problem is instead of treating our array as just um, an array, we're going to treat it as what's known as a circular buffer. Okay. So for our array based implementation of our queue, the array um, uh, is going to be this, this circular buffer type. And so if you've never seen this, this is kind of how it works. So I describe it here in the assignment. So let, let's say we're, we're implementing um, our array-based queue, um, and, and we've got an array, and the current allocation size of our array is five, OK? So, so if we have enough room to hold five values, that means the valid indexes are from 0 to 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So, Let's say you enqueue the items five, seven, three, two. So, so we're treating this as a queue. So if we, and we're going to enqueue the items um, at the lowest index, um, or sorry, at the, at the at the highest index. So anyway, so so if if five is enqueued first, it would go at index zero, and then seven would go at the next index, index uh, one, followed by three, followed by two. Okay, and then let's say you dequeue um, an item, so that would remove five from the front of the queue. So the way we're going to handle that with the circular buffers, we're going to keep two, uh, I mean, they're not pointers, we're going to keep two values uh, for indexes. So one index that represents what the front index is um, of our current circular buffer um, for our queue here, and one index that represents what the back index is. Okay? When I dequeued that item, so initially both the front and the back index are going to be zero. And so when, when we were enqueuing items, just the back index was incre increasing, right? Because the back index keeps track of the back of our array in the circular buffer here, uh, of our queue in the circular buffer here. 
But when we decute an item, all we, we're going to do is then just increment the front index, right? So the, the front index went from zero to one. Um, but so this is a circular buffer then in this sense. So, so far, um, um, not too different from like when we used a list, an array based list, and where we were able to, to put things onto the front of the list or put things onto the back of the list or, or remove things from the front of the back. And in fact, um, this is kind of a tangent, but um, you could really actually re reuse a lot or most all the code um, where we implemented a, an array based list. For the queue. In fact, you could use your array based list to implement the queue because we could use one of our, li our lists to implement our queue because our list had um, member functions to put things onto the end and to, to remove things from the front or, or vice versa, right? So, so we could just uh, reuse like a putting things on the end um, to enqueue items and removing things from the beginning to DQ items. Right? Um, but anyway, so, so back to our array based queue here. So if we have 732, there's actually still a little bit of room, um, it, you know, that we've allocated enough room to hold five items. We've only got uh, our actual size of our queue is three here. So we could safely push two more items on here. So let's say we push an eight and a one, all right? So when you push an eight, there's no problem. Eight, you know, we would just increase the back index and eight would go into index four. But if we push a one, this is kind of where the circularness comes in for the circular buffer. So when you push, when you push the, um, the value one here, we're gonna circle back around uh, our back index and it's gonna end up being pushed at index zero, that value. At this point, our array is actually full, but now the front of our circular buffer of our um, of our queue here um, is at index one, and the back item wraps around back to index zero. Right? So now, you know, I discussed this. If, if if you needed to push one more item onto this queue, uh, you are we are still going to have to. Um, so if we want to enqueue another item, a sixth item, we're going to have to dynamically um, increase the size of this array. Or uh, I already did that for you. So like we've done with classes before, there is like a grow um, queue if needed or something like that given to you that, that will grow this. Um, but but uh, but but otherwise, this solves the, the problem. If there is room. Um, in the array, both the in queue and the so as long as we don't have to to grow our array, in queue and dq go back to being constant time operations. If you treat the array as a circular buffer, okay, because um, if I need to dq an item, I just increment the front index. So if I need to dq the front index, the the item seven, um, that would just change the front index from being one to being two, right? Need to DQ another item, it would go from being index two to index three, right? And you know, like we saw, as long as there's a, as there's some empty space, if I want to enqueue an item, I'm just going to increase the back the back index. So both of the indexes are increasing whenever we DQ or enqueue an item. Um, they're they're increasing except with that complication. So there's there's a load of extra work. So um, if you do increase the index beyond the end of the allocation, I've noticed that you're checking this when you're doing the wrapping around the buffer. You need to be checking this um, for the allocation size, right? So so the the current allocation size is five. So the valid index is zero to four. So when we enqueued and had to wrap back index around, we were checking um, if if back index became five. When it became five, we had to wrap it back around the index zero. All right. So questions about that? That's the um you, you have to kind of understand that to implement um the in queue and the dq. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I talked a little bit. So, so that wrapping around, I mean, you know, you could just have an explicit check. So if the back index is greater or equal to, oh, um,
Um, I just noticed that, uh, yeah, you shouldn't be checking size there. That would give you a bug. So that's kind of a, kind of a bad thing there. So you need to be che checking the um, allocation size because allocation size is different from the, the, the size of the array. So this is the actual number of the items, right? So, so size would be three here, whereas allocation size would be five, right? So, um, so yeah, I need to go change that as soon as, as, soon as, as, soon as we're done with the video. So, so you really need to be checking um, um, or doing a mod um, for the allocation size here, or else you're going to have a bug. So I could have sworn I had that correct. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, Oh, although, yeah, now everybody that's already cloned their repository is going to have it like this. So, yeah, but I'm going to have to make an announcement about that, too. So, um, all right. So, anyway, if you do this correctly, if you mod by the current allocation size, um, then when you hit whatever your, your allocation is, um, you should wrap back around index zero. Um, and, and yeah, you can you can do that as an explicit if statement, as I started to say. Um, you know, so so basically, both for your in queue and your dequeue, you're going to be doing something like this. You need to increment the value, but then you need to wrap it around. So every time you increment this value for in queue or dequeue, whether you're incrementing the front index or the back index, you need to wrap it around. So the common thing you'll see if if you see code that implements a circular buffer. Is people will use modulus arithmetic instead of uh, an explicit if statement like this to wrap around. So this works the same way, basically. So when you mod by the allocation size, um, so if you increment by one, and if, if the current allocation size is five, right? So, so when you do five mod five, so, so mod is the remainder. So anything less than the allocation size would just be the same value, but anything greater than the allocation size, uh, the remain so so five uh, divided by five has a remainder of zero is, is what I'm saying here. So that wraps it back around. So 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 index zero one two three or four modded by five would just be zero one two three or or four, but then five modded by five would would wrap it back around to zero, which is the correct behavior if you, uh, if you don't know what a mod is or modulus arithmetic, you might want to Google that. So it's a common kind of thing. We've used it before for assignments for this class. So. Um, okay. Okay. Um, about that, so I want to I want to jump in and talk about the the first three tasks here, and then we'll come back um, and see if there's questions then about the the, the last two tasks, which are then implementing some of these uh, methods for the NQ method for the priority queue. So, so you go, let's get let's get you started. So the front member method um, um, is meant to be kind of a warm up. So it should the front member method should be straightforward you don't have to do any of the modding or anything because the front index should be pointing to the front value of the queue right so so, so all you have to do is access the value at the front index although again uh, as usual you have to check um that um that it's not empty and throw an exception so if, if somebody asks for the front item from the, from an empty queue um, uh, an exception is thrown. Uh, otherwise, you just access the front index item and, and return that. Right? So, um, um, so your first three tasks, um, the the tasks are going to be in the test aq.cpp, right? So there is a test lq, but those should already be. Um, so there's a, there's. I also give you a linked list version of of a queue, right? But um, you're not going to be adding any of those methods. You're going to be only adding for the array based um, implementation of the queue this week. So so these are already uncommoned out and should be working. So those were some of the tests that passed in the way here.
And as usual, I mean, at this point, I don't think I'm giving away anything for most people. If I show the signature uh, again, like I've, I've done before for some of these help sessions. Um, so if not, uh, so not LQ, but um, so if we look at our AQ, uh, maybe I should have looked at the at the abstract base class here. So again, as usual, we have an abstract base class. Um, as usual, for the last two or three assignments here, where we've been building um, um, implementations of our basic data types, data structures. Um, so again, you know, the, the, the q.hpp defines um, our API, um, and, and you will want to uncomment the, the, the methods that you're supposed to be doing for task one, two, and three as you do them from this header file as well. So front, and q and dq, right? So basically a q, you know, um, um, I mean, this is the same API as is given in both of our textbooks, basically, right? So the basic things you want to do with a queue is in queue items um, on the back of the queue, uh, DQ items from the front of the queue. Um, and as is conventional, we separate removing the front item from um, 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 accessing what the front, what the value is of the front item. So if you want to get the value of the front item, you use a method called front for a queue. And if you want to actually remove the front item so that you have a new so that, that whoever was second in line or second in the queue becomes the, the new front of the queue person or item, you have to do the DQ. Um, and then we've got the other normal things. So get size and is empty. Um, and yes, about it. So there's a, a equals. Um, there is an indexing operator, which is mostly used for the test. So you normally don't need to look at items in the middle of the queue. So, so that's one thing that probably wasn't defined in our textbook for the queue um, API. Um, so mostly in there for testing. So anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, you could, one way you could get the signature is it's basically given to you in the API. So if you copy the signature from the queue.hpp, um, that's what you want. Um, implement for your task one, two, and three. But um, notice this is a this is a constant method. So I kind of stop talking. I stop sort of pointing those out so much anymore, but uh, you know, when, when you ask for the front item, you're not actually modifying the queue. So, so it should be a constant number method. Um, and um, eh, as usual, you know, we could also define our stub here. So um, so our front should go after the, or before the string method. Oh after the string method. There we go. Although, yeah, so again, as usual, I mean, this is a, um, a member function of our AQ class, and we're templatized again, so it's an AQP, AQ of some generic type T. Um, and just to make it stub out, I could return like a, use an empty constructor for whatever the T type is and have it return that, so it returns and whatever. So that should compile. So, um, and I want to return the key front item. So in this case, um, 
but yeah, I mean, maybe I wouldn't normally put this in documentation, so this is more of implementation details, but um, uh, so in this case, you know, just to remind you, um, in the um, array-based implementation to the um, index always points to the current item of our queue, right? Turns the front item from the queue. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah, that should build. Try it. Should run our test. Or some, but yeah, if we have a queue with a single value seven on there, if we ask for the front, we should be getting um, instead of instead of uh, yeah, when you uh, when you create an integer using the default constructor, you get a zero. So. All right, so that's that's. Um, That's past one. Anybody have questions on that? Anybody have questions about task two or three? We'll talk about task two or three then here. So um, they'll have some similar challenges for these. So you have to do the DQ and the NQ, the next two tasks. Um, Yeah, start by looking at the tests for both of them. I'm going to go ahead and do both of these, talk about both of these at the same time. And then we'll talk about the last two tasks. I'm not certain why we had, uh, anyway, so yeah, it looks like there's two, um, two tests uh, for task three, so make certain that you get both of those when you're working on this, or, or more than, uh, there's additional tests because once you get through task three, uh, you should have all of your um, array-based implementation of Q finish. So um, but yeah, once, once you get task three working, make certain that you get all of everything, all of the tests um, um, uncommon and, and running. Um, so it's suggested that you do DQ first, right? So for DQ, um, it should remove the item um, at the front of the queue, right? Um, and, and yeah, that's so that's similar to like pop um, or uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, similar to if we had like a remove front item um, in our list. Um, so I think I think we had remove back and remove front. So. Um, So yeah, I, I think the only careful thing you have to worry about um, is, uh, uh, you know, so, so you do have to check if the queue is empty and throw an exception. Um, if somebody tries to dequeue from an empty queue, otherwise you just need to increment the front index. Um, but 
but being careful to um, circle around the buffer. So after you increment front index. Um, well, oh yeah, so I did. So I must have. I must. I must be remembering. I and so in my discussion someplace, I did correctly say, you know, make certain that you're testing the allocation size. So, so yeah, that's um, uh, that's definitely though. People reading the the description at the start um, uh, could have a problem there uh, if they follow what we set up above there. So I need to make an announcement about that. So, so make certain that you are using the allocation size because that's the actual size of your array that you need to wrap around. All right. And then MQ, you know, so it's it's similar. If you get DQ working, um, MQ, um, the 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 one problem, the one one difference about MQ, um, um, I mean, it is possible that your Q is currently full. So before you do anything else, um, you should be calling you should be calling the grow Q if needed, which has the implementation for the memory management to um, double the size of the backing array for the queue um, if, if needed. And yeah, this, um, um, maybe I can quickly look at that. We got time today. Um, but if you look at the implementation of the grow list if needed, um, so it's, it's pretty similar to, to the versions of this um, are the grow queue if needed um, that we've had before. So it just starts off by, um, um, you know, if, if the, the size is less than the allocation size, we don't have to grow anything yet. So we just return. Otherwise, it, it doubles the allocation size. Or if, if we have an initially empty list, it sets an initial allocation size. And then it allocates a new array of values and it copies all the values. Uh, although one wrinkle here, so no matter what the front and back index um, are currently for the queue, um, it copies all the values from the old one um, into starting at index zero, right? So, so you know, the, the, the old store could be at any location and could be wrapped around, but, but after it does the, um, the, the grow, growing of the queue, um, um, uh, it restarts it so that the, um, Front index is at zero, and then the back index is wherever it needed to be um, when it copied all the values over from the old um, array. So. Um, But, uh, but yeah, so besides having to, to grow the queue, um, it should look pretty similar to the in queue then um, after that. So, except you're manipulating the back index instead of the front index. And of course, the, the size is increasing by one instead of decreasing by one. Okay, um, any, anybody have any questions about those? So those are all, those are the methods that you have to implement in the array-based queue. I hope from people's experience up to this point that all the, that those three should be relatively straightforward. Okay, so if no questions, uh, let's talk about task form five. So you are going to be doing something with the L. Q as well, actually L priority Q, but um, um, let me um, um, let me talk a little bit about what a priority Q is. Um, again, somewhere in the assignment description, I discuss the priority Q a little bit. Uh, maybe it was task four where we talked about it more. Um, 
anyway, so um, a priority queue is just a queue, but so, so you can enqueue items in, in any order as normal. So, so enqueue um, just puts items into the queue. But the way a priority queue works is there's some idea of the, the items on the queue, uh, whatever the, the types of the items are, you know, so whatever the type T is. But, but the items have some idea of an additional um, attribute. So they have a, a, a priority, right? Normally we uh, use like a, a number for priority. So high priority might be 10 and low priority might be one, something like that, right? In, in our implementation of the priority queue, we're gonna assume that whatever the type T is, that they can be compared, okay? So I mean, you know, not all, not all types implement comparison operators like less than or greater than. So, but, but we are gonna be assuming that, that, that the type T's that you try to manage with our priority queues um, have the standard Boolean less than, greater than, equal to uh, defined for the type. And that, that comparison um, defines the priority ordering, okay? So in particular, you know, just, um, to be explicit, if I have two values of type T, value one and value two, if, if you do like a greater than comparison, then if, if we compare that, if it's true that value one is greater than value two, that means that the priority of value one is higher, right, than, than value two. So if I uh, in queue value one and value two on a queue, and, and then if I do a DQ immediately, so, so even if I in queue value two first, so it would normally be at the front of the queue, and then I in queue value one second. If I do a DQ, whatever is the current highest priority value on the queue should come off first on the DQ. Okay. So in this case, value one should come out if, if only value one and value two were on the queue. So that's that's what a priority queue is, all right? And um, from describing that, I just realized. Um, so even though you know it, it's, it makes a difference on the DQ um, um, of, of which value comes out, but we actually are going to end up mod modifying the NQ method. Okay, so what we're basically doing is we're going to modify our NQ method to insert items in the queue to, to keep the queue sorted by priority, right? So that the highest priority item is always at the front of the queue, and then the second highest priority item would be the second item in the queue down to the lowest priority item uh, will always be at the back of the queue, right? So uh, that's, a, that's a slightly easier way to implement the queue than to, uh, the, uh, another approach is you could just uh, leave them unsorted um, and then you could like search, um, but then you would have to, um, basically search through all the items and remember which is the highest priority based item. And the problem with that is that if the pri highest priority based item is in the middle, um, well, you know, again, um, um, so, so, so let me talk a little bit about the efficiency here. So, so um, the, 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 the problem with um, keeping the queue sorted, um, like I just talked about, is that, um, that it does turn in queue back into a, um, uh, a big O of in operation, okay? So for the array-based implementation, um, if the, the, the item that we want to insert happens to be the, um, the lowest priority item, um, then um, of course we could just, it, 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 it could just be inserted back on the end of the queue, right? And, and, and uh, that would be no problem. But if the item uh, happens to be like the highest priority item, um, I mean, again, using the circular buffer, if, if the buffer currently wasn't full, we could in principle uh, uh, actually decrement the front index in order to insert an item to be the new front item, right? But um, no, neither of those solutions, and, and that would allow it, both of those to be um, past the time operation potentially, but for any other case where the item has to end up being somewhere in the middle, we can't do anything except do some shifting, right? So we're gonna have to make some room for the array-based, uh, shift some items one direction or the other so that we can insert it in the correct position in the array. 
And for the linked list based, um, a similar argument goes. So, so you're, we're also going to be implementing in queue for a linked list based priority queue. Uh, so, yeah, and, and again, if it happened to be the, the lowest or the highest priority item that we're trying to add in, we could just put it to the front or the back of the, of the linked list. But if it happens to be somewhere in the middle, we have to search our linked list uh, and then correctly insert, a, create a new node and correctly insert it at the right position on the link list to keep the link list sorted. Right. So, and to finish my thought on this, um, so another approach, a uh, simple approach to implementing a priority queue is we could just in queue items and let them be in whatever order on the queue, right? And just have our in queue be a uh, constant time, big O of one. Uh, and then do some sort of a search on the DQ for the, you know, find the highest priority item, search for it, right? Um, and then again, though, in that case, both the, the search ends up being uh, O in, in, in the worst case. And then once you find the item, you're going to have to still do the shifting uh, for the array based. Um, for the linked list base, once you find the item, um, you can, you can remove it, right? So searching and then removing um, um, are, are kind of in, in the, the same, same bit of code. But for the array base, you'd have to search. Uh, and then once you search, um, you'd have to shift the items. Uh, so once you find the item it needs to be removed, you'd have to remove it and shift the items down or up. Anyway, so, so for this one, we are going to be modifying doing the in queue base, so keeping the queue in sorting order. So. So, um, you know, again, um, I, I, I suggest that you start since, since we've been working with the array based priority queue, uh, we start with the array based priority queue first. Um, I also think it's a little bit easier. So. So, um, so I had a question finally here. So, so uh, can you elaborate more? So um, where, so what method are you talking about where you stop after finding just two items are out of order? Um, is this, this for, this is for the, where I talked about, yeah, possible implementations for um, the array based uh, queue, right? Right, right. Um, so um, um, the, the, the two approaches here, so, so jump into that. Um, I mean, you know, but in, in both cases, uh, I suggest that you implement it this way for the array based, right? You start at the end and go backwards towards the beginning. So you start at the end index um and, and and go backwards so you're gonna have an item that you want to insert at the, the correct place so you could think of it this is kind of like a, a bubble sort pass but going kind of backwards so remember when we talked about bubble sort so in that case you would start by uh, just copying the code that you implemented for in queue to insert the item at, at the back of the queue but then you would bubble it backwards so you would you would uh, start by comparing that new item that you inserted at the back to the i to the old back item and if they are, if they're out of order, you would swap them, right? Um, out of order mean meaning that your new item had a higher priority than the old uh, back item on the queue, right? And you would just keep bubbling those, right? So so by swapping those, but by bubbling those, um, you would eventually get it bubbled up to its correct location until you found that the that the item next item had a higher priority or, or equal priority. So I mentioned a little bit, so be careful when you're checking for both of these that um, um, you wanna make certain that you don't, uh, so the new item should not end up being uh, in the queue above an existing item of the same priority, right? So, so you should end up being above items of lower priority, but below items of higher or equal priority, whether you do this bubbling or the shifting. Um,
So, and, and then for the second approach, um, so conceptually, you can also think of this as kind of like um, an insertion sort pass. Again, going back to when we talked about insertion sort. Um, so here, um, uh, you're basically doing the same kind of idea. So, so you just want to start shifting items down until you detect that the item you're about to shift um, is of higher or equal priority. And at that point, you stop doing the shifting um, and you insert the item um, at that hole that, that you've now made by shifting everything up of lower priority um, by one index, okay? So um, I'm not quite seeing the, 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 the um, um, place in the assignment description where I talk about uh, just two items being out of order. So I mean, basically for both of these approaches, you stop as soon as you detect that um, um, you have found the item that's of equal or higher priority in the queue, right? So, so both bubbling or this shifting uh, stop or they can stop um, as, as soon as you detect um, that you've reached the item with a greater or equal priority, right? Did that kind of answer the, the question or did you still have a question about, about those approaches there? Um, all right, so I'll move on here, assuming that that helped a little bit. Okay, um, so um, the way I describe this um, uh, for the array base, it's either kind of bubbling um, or um, shifting with the uh, insertion. Um, there is one, so you know, this is conceptually a bit complex here. So, um, I mean, Hopefully at this point, people have enough practice, you're, you're somewhat comfortable with, you know, kind of iterating backward, backwards through an array. We've, we've had to do that a couple of times for different reasons, right? But um, you have to remember that this is a, a circular buffer. So, so again, as you're um, either kind of bubbling backwards or uh, shifting items, kind of going from the back towards the front, you have to worry about, um, have I gone past the front of the, the array now, right? Um, so if you start at the back index, you're gonna be decrementing your indexes now, um, but um, if you go below index zero, you have to wrap back around to, again, the allocation size minus one. So you wanna wrap back around to the highest valid index of the array. So this is my suggestion. So, so you start, so you use two indexes so, so, so to have two uh, local variables, like the current index and the previous index. And so the, the, the so like when you insert initially th this value, um, your current index would start at like your back index plus one, right? Um, and then previous index is, is one minus that. And then you, then, then you decrement both of these, current index and previous index. Uh, but after you decrement these, you check both of these, whether they're less than zero. Um, and, and, if, uh, and you have to do this for both of these, right? Because first, as you're decrementing both of these, first previous index, you know, so, so at one point, current in index will be one and previous index would be zero. When you decrement both of these, uh, current index would become zero, which is still valid, but previous index would become minus one. At that point, previous index, you need to check it and wrap it back around to, um, to the highest valid index in the buffer. And then the next time when you decrement, you know, current index would go from zero to being minus one, then it would have to be wrapped around. All right. Um, and as I mentioned in here, um, unfortunately, I mean, you, if you try using the mod operator, it doesn't quite work in C because 
a minus one mod five. So this is kind of a technical thing, but most people would define modulus to actually mean the remainder from divided by five. So the remainder divided by five should always be a value from zero to four, right? But um, um, the, the C modulus operators is actually not um, a real modulus. Um, um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, minus one percent. So, so if, if you decremented from zero to minus one and you did percent five, you'd actually get minus one. But the not what you want. You want that to go back around to actually five minus one um, or be a remainder of four there. So, you know, again, if you're more comfortable, you could just do an explicit if statement. Um, although if you look, there is a modulo function um, for you. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't looked at the, um, the um, a priority queue yet here. Um, Um, so yeah, I meant I mentioned I meant to talk a little bit about these. So if you look in our um, um, the the definitions that you're given, um, there is no priority queue based class because both the a priority queue and the l priority queue are going to actually be subclasses of the a queue or the l queue respectively. Okay. So again, uh, this is some more example of doing object-oriented programming. So like uh, going back and looking at the A priority queue, A priority queue is just um, um, a subclass, a child class of using public inheritance of the A queue, right? So these are both array-based queues, um, but um, for the A priority queue, um, so, so Basically, when you do this, we're going to inherit all of the definitions of the AQ. So let me open up the AQ that header file here. Put that over here, right? So an A priority queue is an AQ. So it has all of these member functions defined. So anything that an AQ can do, an A priority queue can do. And it also inherits all of these. Uh, again, these are all protected so that we can access these. Um, in child subclasses. So, you know, both all the front index, back index, and everything, all these member variables are also um, defined for an a priority key. Right? So, um, what I'm getting at is that um, to implement the a priority queue, all you have to do, you don't have to redefine anything. Everything is going to work exactly the same except the in queue method. Okay, so when you get to this step, uh, uh, basically, uh, I'll go ahead and give this one as well. So, um, I mean, all you're doing, um, you would have already implemented the in queue if you'd done task three here, but. Um, when you get to like task four and task five, um, all you need to do is define a new version of the in queue method like that, right? And then what you want to do, as I suggested, um, if, if you have your in queue working um, for the, the, the base class, your, your array based queue, you should just copy um, your implementation of, of the in queue method from the AQ into um, your aq.cpp file, right? Because you want to start with that. Of course, you, you need to change the name from aq to a priority queue uh, for the namespace, but otherwise, uh, you can pretty much start with your in queue method, right? Because uh, in queue for the array based queue, um, basically, you know, for, for both of these approaches that, that I mentioned here, um, you want to start by inserting the value onto the in, just like you were doing for the in queue, but then you do some additional work to maybe bubble it up or to shift items and, and then insert it um, into its correct place, right? So, so you know, you get about 80% of the code, uh, the, the easy 80% of the code comes is the same as the in queue that you implement in task three, but but you need to add in this stuff to um, 
to then make certain that your queue is in uh, sorted order, sorted by priority here. All right, questions, questions on the uh, a priority queues um, in queue method? See, there's already six here. Let's, let's, let's then talk a little bit about the L priority queue. So, so I did throw in that um, you're, um, um, you do still have to, to go back and work, do some stuff with linked lists as well for the final task five. Okay? So um, um, uh, again, there's, a, there's an L priority queue um, header file defined, um, which just public inher publicly inherits from the L queue class so again, you can just uh, of, for this one, um, um, you know, if you look at the LQ class, so I, I can kind of show you this one since there is already an implementation of the MQ function, the LQ class. So, so you could take the MQ definition um, and then if you find the MQ method, This would make a good starting point for the uh, implementation of uh, a priority based in queue. So, so if we copy that, uh, our linked list based in queue, um, and um, open up your uh, all priority queue SCPP. So, so there's nothing in here because the only method that you're going to have for both the priority queues is just the in queue method. So that's the only one that you're overriding out of the base class here. But, um, but yeah, you bring in the in queue. So comment I gave to a lot of people on the previous slide, make certain that when you copy stuff over like this, that you reread your comments and things, you know? So, and also like in this case, um, you know, I copied over, but um, um, it's not, um, it's not the NQ method of the LQ, it's the NQ method for the L priority queue, right? But otherwise, everything should be the same, I think. Um, and kind of like I like I mentioned, um, uh, so, so I give some ideas of, um, of um, how you can um, approach the NQ for the linked list version. So again, um, uh, you can think of this as bubbling or, um, or kind of doing a search inserting. Um, so these approaches, again, I, I don't know what people will think is are most, um, are most comfortable with. Um, so uh, like, for example, let, let me discuss. So if you wanna try the bubbling, what you're going to be doing is you start by inserting the the, the node um, on the front of the linked list. Okay, so remember, uh, normally when you do an NQ, it inserts on the back of the linked list. So the, the code I just copied over is actually um, copying this, making this the new back node, right? So if you want to try doing the bubbling, what you would want to do is, is modify this so that it creates a new node, but it makes it the new front node, um, and then changes the the, the front node. Um, be this new front node that we just added. Right. But then after that, the, 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 the bubbling would be instead of um, trying to do linked list pointer manipulations, you would, be, uh, you would be starting at the front node. You would just be comparing the value that's in the front node with the value pointed to by the front node. And if they're out of order, you would just be swapping those values, okay? So in that case, you're, you're leaving the nodes of the linked list you're leaving all the pointers, you're not touching those. And all you're doing is swapping the values between your, 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 um, uh, your nodes in the link list, right? So that should work fine um, if you're more comfortable kind of with swapping, but you, would, you still would, will have to iterate through your, your link list. So you will have to follow the next pointers and keep doing those, those swapping um, as, as long as you determine that um, 
the current node and the next node values. Um, you know, so it should always be the case that the current node's value is greater than or equal to um, the next node's value. And again, you need to be careful that you stop swapping at the right point, right? And so, um, so, so yeah, I do believe you need to be checking if it's greater than or equal to the current value. Uh, the other approach, um, in this case, for the linked list version of the priority queue, um, uh, these two approaches are, are, are a bit more different than the array based one. So, so, you know, for the array, whether you're thinking of that as kind of bubbling or shifting with an insertion, in both cases, these are pretty similar. Um, here, these are kind of different, you know, so, uh, so the first approach, you're not manipulating the linked list. For the second one, though, what you're doing is, um, this will be kind of like the, um, the, ser the searches to delete items that you did for um, previous assignments. So what you, what you would want to do is, you, again, you want to search down through your linked list till you find the location where the current uh, and the, the the item, the next item that the current is pointing to, where the well, that's the location that you need to insert the new value into of the new node that you're creating. Uh, and then once you find that location, then you'd want to um, insert that new node um, into its correct position in the linked list, right? By manipulating the the the, the current's next pointer. Um, and the new node's next pointer to, to correctly insert it at that position. All right, so that's all I can think about for that. There is one more thing that I'll mention. Does anybody have any questions about the, the link list? Um, version? Um, as I mentioned in the assignment description, um, I guess I mentioned it in task four, yeah, right there. Uh, if you look closely, um, um, you can you can see this best by looking at the. Uh, uh, LQ, the, the linkless version of the queue. Um, so let me look at those. Um, so you look at the, uh, let's look at the LQ's header file here. Um, or I guess it's, it's only in the actual implementation file. So if you look at the LQ implementation file, top here, um, oh, I guess I didn't do it for LQ. Shoot, I should have done that. So. Um, I guess it was only in the L priority queue that was needed. So I was, yeah, I didn't do it for the L queue, but I did do it for the L priority queue. So here, here's what I was looking for. Um, so if you look at the top of L priority queue, there's a couple of defines here. Um, and um, I probably had those at the top of the um, A priority queue, that CPP as well, um, already for you. Um, Uh, yeah, so, so there's they're up in here as well. These are using what are known as you know C preprocessor macros. So th this is really kind of a cheap way of of, of um, making aliases of different things in your code for C code. Basically, the 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 preprocessor runs before the actual compiler runs. So basically, all it does is going to look through this file at any any place it sees size. 
it's going to replace size with this expression, right? Um, so that means, like, for example, for my L priority Q, um, instead of using uh, this all the time, um, because, uh, you know, size and front node and back node are defined in the parent classes of the L priority queue, right? So instead of using this kind of cruftiness all the time, um, you'll see that we only use like front node, back node without like LQT or, or using this which points to back node, right? And that's, that's because it's using this preprocessor macro kind of trick here. But you do have to be aware of that, you know, so, um, The, the, the problem is, is if you write code, if, if you leave in these macros and you write code like this was points to back node, the problem is, is that it's going to replace back node with, um, or, or, or I'll say, just to make this a little bit clearer, if you use the other method, the LQ namespace, uh, in order to disambiguate so it knows that back node is somewhere, is in the LQ. Um, um, parent class namespace here. Right? To do that, uh, unfortunately, what it'll do is it'll, it'll the the the, mat, the the C preprocessor will um, replace back node again with with this expression. So this, as if I took that and I copied and replaced it, but unfortunately, that won't compile, right? So, um, so in short, what I'm saying is, um, if you want to use those defines, that's fine. I'm, I haven't decided whether I like that or not. So, it makes the code look what I would think of as more normal without having to put in all that um, um, cruftiness uh, to, to get the C++ compiler to be happy because these things are defined in parent classes, right? But it is dangerous. Um, so if you forget, um, in fact, am I wrong about that? Um, because I have this which points to size there. Um, oh, because I copied this. Um, because yeah, I copied this. So, so yeah, that would cause a compiler error. So that would change this to be. This was which points to size, which points to does this, which is actually a syntax error after the the C preprocessor ran. All right, I think I think that'll give you a, an error there. So, um, so anyway, you shouldn't mix those. So either either kind of use those um, and and just always use you know assume that the um, C preprocessor will um, modify it so that um, it knows how to find these with this kind of craftiness, or just remove those defines um, and uh, and use your preferred method um, for for all member variables like using the this pointer. All right, because yeah, you probably can't use both of those at the same time. Okay. Anyway, that, that was what I was talking about the, in the past four there. Anybody have a question about that? So. Um, let's see. Okay, so any, any final questions? I, I can't think of anything. Uh, anything else? Okay. Um, if no final questions, I'll go ahead and end the session there. Then uh, I'll get that posted. I think maybe finally we had a session here without any um, technical difficulties. So I think it recorded okay. All right, as usual, email me if you have further questions or use GitHub um, comments.
see you guys later then.